Well, thank you for the warm welcome. That was really kind of you. I appreciate that. So we are going to talk about salvation through Jesus only. Through, I wrote that, through salvation Jesus, because I may, may or may not be a little nervous. But um, this is something that the Lord has really um, been talking to me about for about four months. Just keep giving me revelation after revelation about salvation. And when we hear the word salvation in a church, we think, check, been there, done that, I'm good. I'm going to take a good snooze right now. But I'd encourage you not to, Okay. And then side note, we're going to read out of Galatians. And if you ever read about like the epistles, you know, and the, <laughs> yeah, the, the letters, sometimes they're, they have a tone, right? And so I was just thinking that as I'm reading these letters over and over and over again, I'm thinking who had the job that had to present these letters to the church? Like there wasn't a video announcement where you could see like what Paul or Peter was talking about. Someone had the job to tell people about like how they're sinning, when they're sinning, and it's just like, that would just be so awkward. But then here we are, you know, some thousand-ish years later, you know, and or two or whatever, and, you know, we got to do the same thing. So, yes. Okay, we're going to start with um, chapter, I know, chapter uh, 5 of Galatians, verse 1, and we're going to go through 6. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will be of no benefit to you. And I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is under obligation to keep the whole law. You have been severed, se severed, severed, severed severed from Christ, you who are seeking to be justified by law, you have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, by faith, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor un uncircumcision means anything, but faith working through love. Okay, so this letter was, I'm just going to give you a little background. This letter and Ryan already gave you a lot of background, so I'm just going to give you a little background. A couple, of years, a couple of weeks ago, if you were here for when Ryan was speaking out of Galatians, okay, I'm going to give you just a little tiny background, a little, um, you know, Reader's Digest version. Okay, so Paul is writing to some Gentiles, meaning not Jewish people, to the church of Gal Galatia, or Galatia, whatever, and it's because they're getting confused, because there's some heresy going on, there's some uh, false teaching going on. And in that letter, he explains also a confrontation that he had with Peter. Okay, Peter, cornerstone of the church, chosen by Jesus. I'm going to build my, you know, entire kingdom on you. Confronts him and tells him, you're wrong. <laughs> you're starting to wear away from your faith because you're trying to look good to certain people. You're trying to polish up the old self. You're trying to go into the, the customs of the law. You're trying to get yourself saved, not through our only hope, which is Jesus, but through the law. And for that, I want to break down what the law is, okay? The, not break down, but just summarize, because, you know, anyways. The law, for all of its intents and purposes for these, for these people, Jewish people chosen by God, was to reveal sin, okay? And the only, uh, the only like relief that they had to, to be face to face with sin. Remember, just think back when you were face to face with your sin, when you were face to face with your shame and your guilt and your fear and had no hope. Yes. We we're just gonna wait for the echo to stop because that's very distracting. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, it's great, it's great. The only relief that they had was this bunch of customs to try to attain to perfection, only to be met, met with the, the hopelessness that they can never achieve sanctification, they can never achieve holiness, and they can never achieve perfection. They can never do it, but they tried. And Paul spent a majority of his life... We, knew, we know that at this, the point of this letter, he was already walking and preaching the gospel for at least 14 years. Okay, and I don't know how old he was at the time. Probably was older, older, you know. Probably knew that reference that Nolan was talking about in the beginning. Anyways, so, <laughs> so, 
right? Okay, so he knew, he studied it. He tried his hardest and darnest to get to that perfection, and he persecuted everybody that went against it, okay? And then fast forward, you know, to the point where he, he meets Jesus. He said, I spent so much of my youth, so much of my life trying to attain to this, trying to, trying to obey the law, and I did good. And I was the best of the best. And he had credentials that he could have used. He probably had credentials that could have used over Peter. But he didn't. He said, we have nothing. And if we have nothing, then what are we doing putting it on other people? Okay? So if he had that much conviction, and he was so steadfast in, in, in his conviction, how are we doing in our conviction? Do we go back to the systems of old in our lives to try to polish polish ourselves up to make us look good on the outside or what's comfortable or what gives us familiarity, okay? Paul had, if anybody, he could have used some excuses that he was insecure or that who's going to listen to me after I just try to kill them. Think about that. The man tried to kill the people that he is now correcting. That's like me 14 years ago trying to like, you know, poison you or whatever, and I'm up here tonight telling you how to live. I'd have to be pretty darn sure about my conviction and about what I believe in. And he was so sure that he was going to stay, face, stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Peter and say, you are wrong because I, this is important to me. Jesus is important to me. What he did on that cross is important to me because I've tried to do it out of my own strength. Because I've tried to do it on my own account and my own merits and my own smarts and my own perfection. And it means nothing. At the end of Galatians, he says, if I have anything to boast about, let me boast about this. That I know Jesus and that I might, might get the righteousness that he has, me, has for me. Okay? So what are some of our insecurities that are pulling us back maybe? Okay? For me... Just going to be real, you know, stumbling on words, <laughs> having an accent, not being, you know, super educated, coming from a second world country. It's intimidating. Feel insecure. But I know where I have been and I know where I get to live now. And it's in him and it's only through him. And it's only because of him. Salvation is only through Jesus. Nothing I can do, nothing I can perform, nothing I can try to pre-qualify myself to meeting him face to face. No, the law did that, tried to do that, and it failed, okay? What we get with Jesus is this, you guys. We get to see our shame, we get to see our guilt, we get to see our fears, we get to see our frailties, our humanity, and say, but we have hope. But we have hope because of him okay so now when we declare you know what i am good because he made me good it's actually truth they weren't able to do that before jesus think about that they weren't able to do that they weren't able to 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 speak truth and actually it be real okay paul lived this this he had the confidence to walk out even though he he had his, you know, probably had some insecurities, probably had his doubts, you know, he had his frustrations. But he understood what salvation actually meant because he saw the other side, quote unquote. And I think we forget the other side. I know Holy Spirit has been really reminding me of the other side, where I was, where I have been, where I come from. And when I try to just, you know, uh, do it on my own strength and, and try to, you know, comfort whatever, how I think, you know, it should be. It's just really just got to start being obedient to that, that voice inside of me that says, just repent. <laughs> okay, just repent. You guys, unrepented sin doesn't just go away. Doesn't just vanish. Doesn't just go poof. Unrepented sin has to be accounted for. And if you're trying to account for it in here, uh, we're going to go there, actually, eventually, in a little bit. Okay. If it's either him, he accounts for your sin, or you account for your sin. That's what Paul's trying to say. It's either me or him, but it cannot be both. If I try to do it through me, 
then the cross is of no, it, got, it, has, nothing, it has nothing for me. It has no value. And just because we, we still have sin in our life, it doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, I'm saved, but I still struggle. It doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't work. It means we got to actually crucify our sinful nature, and we're going to go into that. Chapter 5, 16 to 24. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, sorcery in, in the sense of witchcraft, which is also rebellion and, and control and manipulation. Okay, Emities, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, that leads to emities, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I forewarned you, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But but the fruit of the Spirit, we love this one as this church. We love it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, patience, oh, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If, church, if we belong to Christ Jesus, if we have that hope, if we have the hope for salvation, we have crucified the sinful nature. Have we, church, crucified the sinful nature? Have you crucified the sinful nature? What does it say? It's evident. It's evident. The proof is in the pudding. We cannot say, yes, we did, and then we're envious or we're strivious, strivious, you know, strifus. <laughs> or we are drunkenness or, or jealous or, let's see what else, Mm-mm-mm. or, you know, we're rebellious or we're immoral or we're just super controlling. What else? Mm, Selfish ambition. Okay. Anyways, you get the idea. And we treat the fruit of the Spirit, like almost like when we are really, really, you know, struggling with these things, and we're going to go to him and ask for some peace, and we take a bite of the peace fruit, and then we're just going to, you know, exert peace because we took a bite of that fruit. But that doesn't work like that. It's supposed to be our nature because Christ is in us, our nature. And your nature will show itself. And your nature is the way it is. Your nature is the nature it is because there's a hitch in the giddy up with salvation. Because you're tr- still trying to do things under the law. You're still operating under the law, trying to self-righteous, trying to self-sanctify, self-perfect. Where if we just realize that we are nothing, we are nothing, we are absolutely nothing without him. He is the breath in our lungs. He is, he is the, it, it says, Paul says, you know, I was dead and now I'm alive only because of him, only because of him. That's our hope. And any second, any second that we spend trying to figure it out on our, our, on our own, trying to uh, polish the outside. I, I, I just had this picture. It was a couple of Sundays ago when Steve was preaching, and I just had this picture of polishing the outside. Okay? And Jesus warned us about it, that it's not what's on the outside that makes you, makes you dirty. It's what's on the inside. So if you only deal with the outside, what good does it do to you? What good does it do to, to, to me, to us as a church? That's why we're so passive and ineffective in, in Christianity. Because we, we don't have this one simple foundational thing. The Lord asked me, if you could hang your hat on one thing, one sermon for the rest of your life, what would it be? And I said, this. Because without you, I have no hope. 
without you, if I say, you know, I'm good or I'm loved, means nothing. That's just, that is fake it till I make it. But with you, that's truth. With you, that's actually proclaiming what you have done for me. That's actually redemption. So I really, 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 really pray that there's something inside of you is getting convicted like I have been for a past long time, past little while, past long time, you know, of just what are some of the old things that are pulling you back? What are some of the things that you're still trying to do apart from Jesus? Because maybe you're um, tired of the process (laughs) or it's not quick enough or it's not the way you think it is. And so you just go back like, like Peter started going back, you know, or trying to look good for certain people like he did. You know, what is it? What is it that's, that's drawing you away from the purity of the gospel? Which is Jesus and him crucified. He is our hope. He is our righteousness. He's the only one. Because if as a church we would actually get this, we wouldn't be afraid of our weaknesses because we'd know that that soon as we repent and we say, Jesus, have that, then he can actually fill up more space and we can actually take over more areas of our life and he can actually transform us. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be fearful. We wouldn't be, you know, struggling. We'd be confident. Like Paul blew me away. He was so confident. And he had everything going against him. He had popular opinion going against him <laughs> all the time. But he was so confident because he, he remembered how hard he tried on his own and how empty he was and how all he had was just a glimpse of what perfection could be, what holiness could be, and still he was bad. Still he could never get to it. So let's just finish up with 6, 7 through 10 of Galatians. So do not be be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good, For in due time, we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially those who are in the household of the faith. He's talking about the church. While we have opportunity, our God is a God of sowing and reaping. What are you sowing into? Are you sowing into the hope of your salvation? Are you sowing into the flesh, the law? The one that says, ah, I'm good because I made myself good, because I observed some customs, or because I, you know, whatever, X, Y, Z. <laughs> or are you saying, are you sowing into the Spirit through truth? Are you sowing into the Spirit through repentance? I was thinking about that. I said, Jesus, how do I sow into the Spirit, you know? Not through, like, traditions of, like, observing things, but, what, like, what is it? And he said to me really clearly, Repentance. You sow into the Spirit through repentance. Repentance. You sow into the Spirit by glorifying me. And we sow into the flesh, we sow into the law by saying, oh, I don't need you for this minute at least or this hour, for this day. I'll get to you when it's tough or I'll get to you when it's, I'm suffering enough. <laughs> But let's sow into the Spirit and reap joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, gentleness, the other ones, faithfulness. (laughs) Let's sow into that through repentance, through saying, Jesus, I am literally nothing without you. And I don't want to forget it that I was nothing without you, and I tried And I tried, you guys. I tried to be really good. And I did some good things. And still, it was hopeless. And still, I was 
just rotten. And I had no hope. So if you are someone tonight that you're, you've been sh maybe struggling with, ho with hopelessness or struggling with some of these fruits of the, the flesh, repent. It's really simple. My husband said it perfectly. If we could just get it how simple it is, we'd be, we'd be well off. And he's right. It's repentance. Because out of the spirit living in, in us, taking up residence, he will give, give way and give forth all of the things that he has. So why don't we just pray? Can we get some piano music on? I'm sorry, I was supposed to tell you that a little earlier. I apologize. <laughs> so Jesus, it is only you. And I ask right now, and if you follow along and pray with me, only if you really mean this, because he will show you. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I invite your conviction into my life where I have tried to do it on my own apart from you. Where I am reaping the fruits of the flesh. Show me, Lord. Show me, Lord, where I am reaping the fruits of the flesh because I'm sowing into the flesh, because, because I am sowing into the law. Because I'm trying to, you know, I'm have him revealed to you. Maybe you're trying to comfort apart from him. Maybe you're trying to just, you know, try to do it out of your own strength or you're really attached to some, you know, some customs, some identities that are not of him. Let him show you right now. What is it? What is it? Maybe it's your right to pain or whatever, you know? Jesus, we want to know. And if you really want to know, just tell him. I, I want to know. I want to know. I want to know, Jesus. Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel. But don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today and we hope to see you again soon.